All right, it's time to go back to KDE country. It's been a while since I've taken a look at a KDE distribution, really since last year, and I've always trusted releases from the Linux Mint team, so I thought I would take a look at Linux Mint 12 KDE, the release candidate. But before I do that, let's go quick to the uh, let's go quick to the Linux Mint blog. Wanted to point out one thing on the system system requirements. They recommend at least 512 megabytes of RAM. It says in parentheses one one gigabyte rec recommended for comfortable usage. I'm going to go one step further and say two gigabytes recommended for comfortable usage, and I will show you why right now. All right, I'm running Linux Mint 12 KDE inside a virtual box with Linux Mint 11 as the host. Running this in scale mode, I'm just running this off the ISO without the guest editions installed, just uh, in scale mode, so it's, it's going to look bigger than what it truly is. All right, well, I got rid of the big box here to the left that has the install icon, and I moved the panel bar from the bottom up here to the top. Let me click the Start menu. And as you can see, this resembles a little bit Windows 7. If I highlight recently used, I was looking at the system monitor. There we go. Now what's going to happen here, here at the bottom, it says it's using approximately 470 megabytes of RAM. I have allotted about one gigabyte of RAM on the system itself. And as you can see, it's using that much without me really doing anything. So that's why I say, if you really wanted to install this and have fun with it and run smoothly, make sure you have at least two gigs of RAM and not one. All right, let's move along. Right click on the desktop and you have a nice selection of commands here. It's something that you don't have in uh, GNOME 3 uh, in the shell or Unity, if I recall. So this gives you more options here in terms of uh, customization. You have run command, add widgets, add panel activity, so on and so forth. If I click desktop settings, you have view and mouse actions. And KD, if, if I recall, has always had a very nice selection of wallpaper. And at the bottom it says you can get new wallpapers and go from there. All right, let's move along. Going back to the panel bar at the top, if I right click, you also have some options here. Now KDE is famous for its Windows 7 like um, widgets or desktop panels or panel widgets. Let me click um, Add Widgets. And you have a very nice selection here clock, blackboard, bookmarks, community, CPU monitor. Let's try, let's see, what would I like? Let's try CPU mod. I'm just going to hold it, click and hold it, and drag it to the desktop here. And I click X to get out of it. And you can move this around here. You can adjust the size as you wish. There we go. All right, I think I'll just leave it at like that for now. Okay, there's also a little icon here. If you click that, that will allow you to change the uh, the screen height, move it around, more settings, auto height, so on and so forth. Again, this is a lot more customizable than the GNOME shell. Moving to the left, we have the uh, the time, the clock, date. Message indicator, network interface, most recent device used would be the Linux Mint 12 ISO, of course. Volume control. Let's click Mixer and see what this looks like. And this appears to be the same as I remember it from last time. Okay, let me get out of that. show the desktop. All right, let's go to the menu. Now here you have two options. This would be the standard menu submenu here to get into all of your uh, pieces of software installed in KDE. And basically all I'm doing here is highlighting the mouse over the icon and it gives me the menu submenu as you see here. All right, favorites, the standard favorites menu here, applications. Let's see, graphics, what do we have? Acquire images, DNG image converter, 
One thing that does stick out here is Linux or GIMP is not installed by default. It's kind of unusual. Let's go back to uh, all applications, internet. And of course, uh, Firefox web browser is installed by default. Go back to all applications, multimedia. Let's see, Amarok Audio Player, that's one I've never had good luck with. Uh, disc burning K K3B, known player. VLC, great, that should be installed by default in all Linux based distribution, sound mixer, and the Minitube YouTube client. Back to all applications, go to Office. All right, LibreOffice installed by default, that's fine. Settings, this should be all the uh, system settings, update manager, and so on and so forth, looks good. Let's see, where were we? Uh, the system. Additional drivers. This uses the uh, Dolphin file manager. And I don't believe this has changed o o over the years. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, nice blue color. Of course, th this can be customized. As you see here, I'm just clicking the icons here to the left. All right, let's get out of that. And let's see, what else do we have? Of course, of course the terminal. Okay, black background with green to the left corner. Nice. Okay, at the bottom you have the search bar. Oh, I don't know, let me sound. It gives me all of my sound configuration settings here. Let's go back. I think we saw KMix, didn't we? Let's go to System Bell. System Bell configuration. Use System Bell instead of System Notification. Test. It doesn't seem to be working. Maybe it would if I installed it. Let me click Apply. See what happens. Alright. Nothing there. All right, moving right along. Let's see. Now this, the start menu, is customizable. Now, now this is one thing I do like about KDE. If you don't like this and would like a more uh, traditional type of menu, sub-menu, you can right-click, and it says here, switch to classic menu style. And I will do that. Now here you have more of a uh, known uh, two type of menu sub menu maybe a little bit like uh, oh Windows 2000 I believe now for those of you who don't really care for GNOME 3 or Unity KDE might be a viable option uh, for you it's it's much more customizable than of course Unity and GNOME 3 and really since uh, last year from what I heard from the community KDE has has become a lot more stable than in the previous years. Now please keep in mind that I don't currently use a KDE distribution. But if I were to try it, or to try one, a Linux Mint 12 KDE might be the way to go. So scrolling down here, this, this is basically just the uh, simplified version of the original menu, Linux Mint menu here, which is called the Application Launcher uh, menu. and go back to that and there you go I don't know this this looks okay but all things considered um, I don't know let's go back to classic menu I think I like this better you know something simple not fancy something that is totally opposite of the uh, you know gnome shell and or unity well, final thoughts on, on KDE, Linux Mint KDE release candidate. Uh, it runs stable, at least inside a virtual box. I haven't installed any updates to this whatsoever. Uh, it looks cool. Keep in mind that this is a resource hog, just like Windows 7. Not surprising because it is made to somewhat copy or emulate um, Windows 7 to make it comfortable for Windows users. 
So if you want something that looks uh, slick, something where you can easily add widgets, as you see here, uh, something that I trust from the Linux Mint team, if you are running Windows and wanted to try something different and you've taken a look at GNOME 3, don't like it, and Unity, you don't like it, by all means give this a shot. Keep in mind that this is not quite final yet, so, so there are bound to be uh, some bugs, but I like what I see so far. Um, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Uh, I may, I may or may not install this on my desktop here. I don't know. If I do, I'll, I'll let you guys know and give you more of a, uh, you know, complete rundown of KDE in a full install environment. Maybe. We'll see. All right. Well, that's my uh, look at uh, KDE Linux Mint 12 release candidate. Let's see. If I was supposed to give this. If I was going to give this a score, as far as stability goes, uh, I'd give it a 20. Bugs, it is a release candidate, so I don't know, maybe give it a 10. Uh, you know, software, give it uh, 20 points. Let's see, navigation, it seems, you know, easy to navigate uh, to once you change the menu file here. As far as uh, user friendliness, friendliness, yeah, I mean, if, if look, if you cannot run this menu here then um, there's definitely something wrong but that being said as far as my score let's see 20 20 uh, 20 10 yeah I give it a score of uh, so far a score of 90 now keep in mind this is the release candidate it is not final so if you're gonna try this and download it beware of bugs well that's it thanks for watching this screencast of Linux Mint 12 KDE release candidate. Thank you so much. Please rate, subscribe, and send me some comments about this if you so choose to. And as always, guys, I will catch you sometime in the future. Ciao.